you know, the one way that we have tried to get money to consumers is by giving it to companies in the hopes that it trickles through those companies back to employees. And what I will tell you is I think we will be disappointed by that. I think that a lot of companies that got support will still be struggling when the terms of those grants and loans fall off, which is September. And unfortunately, I think we may see large waves of layoffs that just happen in Q4 heading into Christmas time of 2020. Instead, I think we really need to think about direct capital injections into the hands of people. And when you look at the governments all around the world, they've all embraced this, particularly in the developing world. And I would just encourage us, you know, there's maybe, maybe uh, not that many lessons you could claim to be learned from a developing country, but this is one where I think that their level of compassion for everyday citizens in their countries is worth copying. Well, we, we and certainly putting need- putting more money we, into people's hands, letting consumer spending drive GDP as we try to get out of this pandemic, I think is a very good and smart idea. We, we certainly need a more efficient way to get the money to the people who actually need it. It's one of the reasons why Harvard, Harvard's acceptance of, of money through the CARES Act, not necessarily the PPP program, caused some level of outrage, including uh, from you. I mean, that, that is, that's a sign it's when, a complete people, joke. When, when people are it's sitting a, there. It's, a, it's a complete joke and it's a perversion of what this program is supposed to be. And this is what I mean by, there'll, it'll take a while, Scott, for us to really figure out the unintended consequences of this. You know, if there are multimillionaire land developers that are getting PPP, but not small businesses that really employ one or two people or, you know, that they, they work with banks uh, that don't have the connectivity into the government, whereas the large banks were able to facilitate and mobilize credit or payments to their best businesses. All of these things are probably what happened. Back to your first point, I just want to make sure that uh, I, 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 you know, touch this. The IRS knows how to give money to every single citizen taxpayer of the United States. They know this. They know how to do it tomorrow. They could cut a check tomorrow. It'll be the least complicated thing we've ever done because we've done it for 20, you know, for hundreds of years via the IRS. Look, there are others who have suggested, like, you know, Gary Cohn, for example, during the town hall we did, that if you would have had the payroll processors who, who know everybody, they, they know everybody who is at least getting a paycheck, and then we can do other methods to more efficiently find out who needs money as well, who's not through the, the payroll system, here's a, get, Scott, the, here's get the money example. to them Im Im immediately. Here, here's another example. Look, we, we're, we're going to spend trillions of dollars of, uh, of, of U.S. taxpayer money on junk debt. There's a trillion dollars of U.S. student debt that sits at the Department of Education. There's nothing stopping the Federal Reserve from retiring that debt. Massively simple, straightforward, easy way to drive consumer spending, to give money into the hands of consumers, to do something right for individual U.S. citizens and taxpayers. That's another idea. My point is, it's right now we are way too tilted into things that are opaque, that are difficult to administer, and that may not have the intended consequences we want. Of every dollar that we've given out, fiscal and monetary, you know, what we're talking about is less than five cents that has gotten into the hands of a U.S. consumer. All I'm saying is why not 10 or 15 cents or 20 cents um, and keep most of the other programs as they are? Or why not the incremental spending going towards student debt or towards direct payments to, to U.S. taxpayers? These are not bad ideas. And in a moment like this, when we've already done it once and we've already ripped the philosophical Band-Aid off, there's nothing stopping us from instead of saying here's two weeks to say here's two months or here's, you know, six weeks. We are that compassionate and we can be that compassionate. And I don't understand instead why we continue to defend practices that were not justifiable at any point in time, but particularly in a moment like this where we can see that an entire U.S. economy was completely unprepared for any form of externality or exogenous shock.